This is a demonstration of simulated annealing for component placement. And I'll provide a little background first here from the Siam News published in 2000. Uh, there was the best of the 20th century. The editors named the top 10 algorithms. Uh, one of them was 1946, the Monte Carlo method, which was cooked up by von Neumann, Ullam, and Metropolis. That led to the Metropolis algorithm, which is the heart of simulated annealing. Uh, sort of to counter that, Andrew Moore, who was at Carnegie Mellon, I believe, and now at Google, also did a, uh, uh, has a, a website with a number of algorithms on it, and one of the last sections is hill climbing, simulated annealing, and genetic algorithms, some very useful algorithms to be used only in case of emergency. A little bit more uh, relation to engineering algorithms, the paper that I was referring to, uh, with, with which really kicked off uh, simulated annealing, is a paper by Kirkpatrick in 1983, it's called Optimization by Simulated Annealing. It was cited uh, 36,000 times, which is an awful, uh, a, a really good large number of citations. Now, to put that in perspective, uh, Claude Shannon's Mathematical Theory of Communication was cited 81,000 times. Uh, Dijkstra's Shortest Path Algorithm uh, was, short at 16, was cited 16,500 times. And Albert Einstein's On the Electromagnetics of Moving Bodies was cited uh, 900 times. That's the paper where uh, e equals mc square is first presented, and and uh, basically the, the the takeaway there is Albert should have cited a few people himself if he wanted to get a few more citations. Uh, anyway, back to the abstract of Kirkpatrick's paper, he points out there's a deep and useful connection between statistical mechanics and multivariate or optim or combinatorial optimization. Uh, more specifically, he points out there's a detailed analog with annealing and solids solids that provides a framework for optimization of a variety of very large and complex systems. And the nice thing about this, he sort of uh, exposes new information, provides, and, and points out that that can provide an unfamiliar perspective that could be quite useful when uh, dealing with, with uh, problems that you may encounter. Uh, back to the example from the Kirkpatrick paper, the problem is specified with a knowledge of n interconnected components. Each component is of equal size, so the objective is to split the components into two equal size component compartments rather, while minimizing the number of interconnects between the boxes. More specifically or formally, the objective function is to minimize the cost of the interconnect between two groups of components while trying to maintain an equal number of components in each set. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just flip over to the NetLogo demonstration, where what I have here is I have two sets of components. It's obviously a graph. Uh, there's ones on the left-hand side and ones on the right-hand side, and this is the interconnect between them. This is just set up in a, a simple random graph, although it really wouldn't matter too much. And what I'll do first is demonstrate an approach where, where greed is used to solve the problem. And the greedy approach is one uh, which is basically just a, a gradient descent algorithm where uh, any time a, a perturbation is made to the graph and it improves the solution, it's accepted, otherwise it's rejected. So this is greed in action. It runs very quickly, of course, and as you can see, it is tending to optimize the uh, the placement of components. The number of interconnects is going down, and I think I let it run for about 5,000 times, 5,000 iterations, perhaps a bit more. And uh, at the end of the day, it comes out to about 36 uh, interconnects between the two groups of components. Set this again in a simple random fashion and uh, use simulated annealing. And you'll see that uh, characteristic of simulated annealing, it's accepting a lot of uh, worse moves and, and uh, there's lots of variation in the solutions that are being generated. It is taking a longer time because it does a bit more calculation than the greedy approach. Uh, but you can see over time it, it, it's tend to, tending to optimize the, the uh, cost function and the variation in the solutions is becoming considerably less. And in this particular case, it looks like it's going to uh, peter out at around 10, whereas the, the greedy approach uh, gave us, uh, I think, 36 interconnects. And there's the final result in the layout with respect to simulated annealing, and you can see it did a slightly better job than uh, greed did, and all in all, you know, relatively impressive. And I should point out that this was done in, in that logo, and uh, it's a very useful uh, tool for doing these types of uh, quick simulations for demonstrations. Uh, thank you.